<clears throat> yeah, hello and welcome. No, that's the wrong way. <laughs> Don't want to see my microphone. Yeah, hello and welcome to this video, which is a rapid game on leeches. So, I'll go knight f6 and then see what happens. Is the window all right? Yeah, it, uh, I'm not used to it. Ah, well, I should do this, right? This is a little bit better during the game. I have two views there. So, um... I could do something else, right? I mean, with a bit more time on my hands, what can I do? Maybe, maybe play a King's Indian. Matsubushi is the opponent. Okay. No country information. <clears throat> so we've got the King's Indian. Time control is <clears throat> 15 plus three. I, what I actually can do is, I can play this. This is an interesting line. Now offering white to transpose into a, a Benoni with d5. If he castles, I can take and um, transpose it into a Maroxy bind. This is something interesting, an interesting transposition, because it's not um, completely clear that the white player has some knowledge of this opening. And there's an important uh, consideration with some lines. Yeah, sometimes you can transpose into something entirely different. And um, even though maybe the objective value of the transposition is uh, yeah, not fantastic. I mean, you don't need to love the Maroxy bind with black, but you need to Consider sometimes, um, okay, now we get it, and we'll see how he plays this. I mean, it's possible that he has some idea here, of course, but um, you never know. He might have never played this position before in his life. So here, bishop um, e3 is the most common choice. Knight c2 is also possible, of course. It's, it's, there are little differences here. If he goes knight c2 now, I have knight to d7. Threatening, well, threatening is a strong word, but intending uh, to double his pawns. And it's something that he has to think about uh, if he wants to allow this destruction of his queen side. If he plays bishop e3 now and I play bishop d7, then knight c2 is a different story. I go here. If he now plays knight c2, it's a different story because then there's no knight d7. And he will never have to worry about this double pawn issue. Knight c2 now is the move that um, I am playing in this position. And um, I really have a very nice score with it. Only recently it helped me to... Uh, to win in the final round of the little open and uh, that was a real important game the difference was getting nothing or getting one of the main prizes so and i won this uh, against the 2400 freedom master okay my opponent has played h3 after which i have captured and played bishop c6 in general black is happy to trade one or two um sets of minor pieces because of his space um, disadvantage. And um, h3 is actually, I mean, I understand, he maybe was worried about some knight g4, but h3 is um, a move that now, now he has to play something that um, he maybe doesn't necessarily want to play. e4 is attacked and um, yeah, he cannot play f3 now. You cannot play f3 and h3 in the same position. At least it would weaken the dark square so much that you don't want to do it. So he goes to f3. Of course, white is still fine. I'm not saying that something wrong there, but oftentimes white wants to play f3 and after h3, this is not, um, yeah, not that tempting anymore. So here, knight d7 is, an, is a normal looking move. However, he might take and play b4 in this position. And I'm not sure that I'm okay with that. 
I'm thinking about a5 and then knight to d7. In general, trading uh, dark squared bishops is desirable here again because of the lack of space you want to trade. However, after a5, I wonder if he has e5. That's a move that looks a tad annoying to me. However, I can take on f3, queen takes, and then knight to d7. Oh, I got a network error. Okay, so it's, it's, it's better. Yeah, I think it works, yeah. So e5, I can take on f3, queen takes, knight d7, and then he's in some sort of self pin, and I will get the e5 pawn in exchange uh, for the b7 pawn which normally should be a good trade even though sometimes uh, these kind of trades can be okay for the side giving up the central pawn because sometimes if you have no central pawn like let's say we trade b pawn against e pawn I can actually do that I forget about this in such a situation I have two center pawns which is nice in general but they don't move forward all that much because, well, whatever I move, I will create weaknesses. And sometimes then you can just pressure rise on those open files. So it's not always a clear indication that you, that B and E pawn, let's say, that this is uh, unfavorable yeah, to, to trade a center pawn against a relatively flank pawn. It's not always the case. So let's see what Matsubushi is doing. One thing that I mentioned early on with the transposition into the Moroxi, that it's not clear that the opponent actually knows the opening. I think this actually turns out to be true because he's spending um, a large amount of time. And this h3 and bishop f3 already indicates that he's not familiar with the main line at least. So <clears throat> let's unpaint and see what he does. Most normal would probably be a move like b3 to make sure that if I try to go a4 that he's got b4 available. So a4, let's say he plays b3, I go a4, he goes b4. And that keeps the queenside pawn structure um, intact. It's not a necessary move by any means, but um, it's it's the most <clears throat> conventional. However, if he goes b3 and I go knight d7, he would be absolutely committed to trade because, well, bishop e3 hangs the knight. Oh, that that move is... Um, ooh. <laughs> that is something that I definitely am happy to see because now the, here the dark squares here are weakened tremendously. I have to understand that b4 is, b4 is a very obvious weakness in some way. <clears throat> as there's no pawn controlling it. Let me play that move, I have to do it anyway. <clears throat> and then explain. But there's um, also, c5 is also weakened by a4 indirectly because now you never will get a pawn to b4 to control it. Yeah, in, in With the pawn back on a2, there is potentially a3, b4 trying to evict a knight coming there. And this is not on anymore. What uh, the, the, the big uh, concern for white is here that with another pawn on a light square, we have one, two, three yeah, important pawns on light squares, the um, thing that white has to worry about is that that bishop on f3 might become a real problem piece in the long run. This is a very nice position for black. It is still extremely solid for white, so it's not like I'm winning quickly or so. But um, the, this whole opening is, is geared towards yeah, very patient maneuvering where you try to um, yeah, get into a strategically favorable position. We'll see what's going on now. I'm expecting queen d4 check to make me go back. It looks very natural to centralize the queen. On the other hand, <clears throat> I will go back to g8. I cannot go e5. e5 would be strategically interesting, but it blunders d6. Okay, goes to e2. Hmm. Yeah, now how to how to play? Knight c5 looks extremely uh, normal here. <clears throat> I just wonder if if he's got e5 available. I can take f3, queen takes, d takes e5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't think, I don't think he has enough. Mm, 
currently there is not there's nothing threatened really I'm going to do this move here just to protect e7 and just um, in case of let's say I could pay queen to b6 and he goes knight d5 that I don't um, have to worry about this pawn that's not an absolute necessity but it is a move that generally fits into this position okay okay one still if I move the knight he will go e5 so I'm going to stay <clears throat> with the knight on d7 and protect and uh, pre uh, prepare something like queen to b6 Queen b6 can be interesting to b4, then knight c5. An interesting strategic uh, idea here is to um, play e5 and maneuver the knight like, oh, c5, e6, d4. That would be great, yeah, getting a knight into that big, big square on d4. Okay, so, well, he's, he's actually giving me a tempo here. Um, yeah, if I go knight to c5 now, <clears throat> I mean, queen b2, there is knight d3 winning the exchange. Knight c5, e5, knight b3, I mean, this is not enough. Yeah, I think I'll play this. I mean, the knight wants to be on that square and I, he doesn't have a fantastic way of covering things. Mm -hmm. Okay, but now, <clears throat> now I can, I can consider queen to b6, even though then knight d5, knight mm, d5 will probably be played. What I had in mind was e5 now. Is there anything, is there anything against this that he can do? Rook d1, knight e6, he's got bishop g4 maybe, huh. But knight d4 is a good move. Yeah, the rook on c8 actually now can be a bit silly yeah, after e5 and... Okay, let's say I go e5, he goes bishop g4, rook to c7. Hmm. <clears throat> that doesn't look all that great actually. I didn't really under, didn't really appreciate that when I when I played rook to rook to uh, c8 that this can be a little bit of a liability. Hmm. It's got this e5 idea. I mean, if I go e5, bishop g4, rook c7, I can kick him out with h5 always. Okay, so let's do it. An important point of this move is that if he goes knight d5, <clears throat> I'm happy to take it. That's a different situation than with the uh, pawn on e7. The pawn is on e7 and he goes knight d5 and I take it, he takes with the e pawn and then he might pressurize my e7 pawn. Now the pawn is on e5, no problem at all. I mean, such a situation with knight d5, bishop takes, e takes, black can almost always resolve with going e5, pawn takes, rook takes. Yeah, so if you imagine this back here, yeah? knight d5, I take, e takes, e5 takes, rook takes, is usually okay, but it's difficult to play for, uh, for an advantage in such a situation. Okay, now, knight e6. On bishop g4, I have knight d4. Bishop g4, knight d4, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
should be should be okay. I'm not totally happy with this. I mean, I probably I probably should have done this a bit differently here. Like, can I do this? Maybe knight c5. I don't don't like this so much in with hindsight. Instead, queen b6 or so. I don't know. It's something to be checked later. Somehow, I feel like if he is precise now, he should be should be very okay here. I, I don't quite don't quite can put my finger on it how exactly to do it. Yeah, okay, here knight d4 is going to be played. The exchange sack is nothing much. But what I'm fearing is a little bit is that if he can trade knight against knight. Yeah, but this isn't this isn't that great, I think. I take here. Yeah, and I take it takes e3 and e4 is, is hanging. Also, I can also take the bishop. Knight d5. I mean, this is good, yeah, but I take the bishop, knight d5. No, that's that's not not really that great. Okay, and this is fine. And now this is the only move. And the question is, what to do now? Rook takes is tempting in some way because it's a tempo. But bishop takes attacks the rook. Hmm. Okay, that looks pretty promising. Hmm. I don't know. So rook takes queen c2 or something. Queen f6. I can support this pawn. That bishop takes looks like the, the far more natural move. Or is there is there anything else entirely? There's the move f5 actually. If I go f5 in this position, um, he has to play bishop f3. I take with the pawn bishop g4 h5 and this is the bishop i win the bishop yeah i win the bishop here it's trapped let's let's check uh, it would be kind of silly to play this and then it doesn't work because <laughs> bishop takes is, is clearly also pretty good okay f5 he has no checks or anything i mean my position is is quite okay in terms of coordination so bishop f3 i take it i do threaten to take it there's no rook e1 because e8 is covered so like f5 bishop here takes he has no rook e1 i can take it as e8 is covered so it takes bishop g4 h5 and the bishop has no squares he can sacrifice of course on h5 takes takes queen takes then queen f6 is, is perfectly safe. I have queen g6 coming up, e3 coming up. Okay, so f5 should should do it. Now this is the difference between a rapid game and a blitz game. In a blitz game, I probably just would have played bishop e4. Maybe shows that I'm tactically not uh, sharp enough sometimes, but I probably would have just played it. And f5 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 wins a piece and it, it you know the bishop on g4 is a little bit odd so it's not um totally surprising or like coming out of the blue this idea so bishop f3 i'll take it just quickly yeah but there's nothing nothing to check anymore and there's no square simply Okay, 
um, what we can check here is the best move now. This is an interesting question. I was thinking queen f6, but this is also very much an idea. Yeah, attacks the queen on queen g4. I'm I can actually do both queen g5 or rook g5. Queen g5 has an additional idea to play c2. Uh, to if the queen let's say goes to well, okay, the white queen has no decent square anyway. I know to c8 or something, then I can just play c2 and promote. But rook g5 also looks very promising. There is this e3 idea as well to open up the bishop and then suddenly get an attack on g2. Queen g5, however, is extremely uh, convincing. Yeah, he basically has to trade queens. And then uh, I'm just a piece up. Pretty much. Even though after queen g4, queen g5 takes, takes, rook c1, he will very likely win this pawn on c3, which is a bit of a shame. It's not the pawn that I want to give up necessarily. Let's see what he plays. Most likely it's maybe queen e2. Keep the queens on the board for some wake uh, swindling chances. Mm. Yep, and he plays it. So what is the next move? I think maybe rook c1 is his intention. I mean this is a this makes sense anyway. Bring the queen bring the queen into the game and e3 becomes an option preventing rook c1. So there are a couple of things in favor of this move. Okay, there's also e3, it's on the cards. Like e3, threatening mate. And, uh, he probably would need to play f3 then, which is not very attractive. So how do we win if he plays, let's say, hmm, yeah, what does he play, g3? No, then I go e3 as well. Hmm. Yeah, here e3 is interesting, threatening mate again. And uh, again, he has no check. f3, I can take with the bishop or I can play e2. Yeah, this is winning, eh? I think this wins. f3, just bishop takes. Is good. And so here, <coughs> sorry, Bishop E4 is probably most convincing. There is no check or anything to to uh, annoy me so let's just pick up more material queen takes of course also look good okay so i can take this with check And then play and c2 next year for promotion. Mm. Yeah, many ways to do it. This also threatens bishop g2 with mate.
So Bishop G2 is made. And the rook g1 made or made with the queen. Okay, thanks for the game. Matsubushi. Thanks. Yep. So let's uh, have a look at this game and that is this board. And uh, let's have a look. I think here I want to change the view so that you can actually see the engine. So we had this Meroxy bind by transposition, getting uh, a main line, uh, a main line um, position here. Yeah, I mean, h3 is not a bad move, as I said, it's just like, yeah, it's actually the engine's choice, <laughs> uh, which I think is kind of funny. Um, so h3. I think the most common moves here are queen d2 and knight c2. Um, okay, so h3. I'm happy to trade, absolutely. Take, take, take. And now bishop f3, which is a normal choice. Um, the other moves also make some sense, of course. Queen d3, queen c2. It leads to very similar, similar structures. Um, the engine, by the way, generally favors white in the Meroxy bind because of the space the engines always um, evaluate space quite highly and I mean this is not unreasonable just something to keep in mind I've analyzed this a little bit with computers and sometimes the engine even gives uh, advantages for white in positions where I think there's nothing even though um, in general the engines uh, evaluate those positions quite well but sometimes there's something like hmm really still an advantage I don't think so and then slowly if you drill deeper um, the evaluation goes down. So bishop f3. I mean, you can argue with this move. The engine doesn't like it all that much. Anyway, I go here. Yeah, this again, I didn't like so much because you can take and play b4. That's what I already mentioned. And the computer agrees that white is better here. It's just annoying. Eh? You don't get the square here. And this is something that is a very, yeah, that is a uh, very short-lived uh, um, square yeah, for the for the knight. Yeah? You get you get it expelled quickly. So I go a5. That's a better move. He played a4. Yeah, and this is you already see the eval going down. The engine recognizes uh, how weak those squares are. Yeah, I think what I I, I suggested b3. Um, in the in, during the game and after this it's important to understand that now I mean Bishop e3 is blundering the knight so he's committing to this trade and the danger that white faces in general here is that if we trade um, more pieces and I get to an ending um, I, I might have a situation where this bishop isn't all that great even though with the space white often still has an okay position it's not like it's um, totally terrible or so. Um, however, a4 helps me a lot in that regard. Many endings now will be much more favorable in comparison. One thing that is often underestimated is that these weaknesses, they can often be used with a king. If you imagine an ending, my king might just invade, which is not possible if he is not playing a4, but like a3, b3 and so on, and then b4 is covered. So knight d7, um, he decided to take, which is probably yeah not much choice anyway. And now, um, yeah, I expected queen to d4. And, uh, I would have played king g8. I'm not sure. <clears throat> f6 is not uh, terribly bad, but as long as you don't have to play it, you don't want to. One reason is, if you go f6 in such a position, after subsequent knight d5, you have trouble taking this. After e takes, you would have huge weaknesses here. Yeah? So it, it robs you of some flexibility. I would have just gone to g8. And uh, then we have a similar position to the game. One problem with this uh, queen position is that after coming knight c5, I actually threaten a fork or threaten the a pawn. So 
it's a little bit uncomfortable here. Also, there's queen b6, as the engine points out in a line where I try to trade queens, and this is again um, rather favorable for me to trade. So he went queen e2 instead. And now, yeah, you can you can argue rook e8 was a waiting move, basically improving slightly. Um, engine wants to go knight c5 immediately. Yeah, I mean I saw that, but I wasn't entirely sure about this. Um, I saw this, but here I wasn't totally clear to me if I have a very good uh, setup. So let's say he attacks it, and I wasn't quite sure where to go with this. Always knight d5 coming, and it's a little bit loose this position here yeah, with the with the knight being unprotected. The engine likes it, probably just a pawn. Okay, but this is not a very <clears throat> time sensitive position. You can play improvement moves. This is um, played, and now I played rook c8. Yeah, again, I, I didn't like it all that much uh, a little bit later because it somehow. Someone misplaces the rook in some way. I mean, it's probably it's not terrible, but this is uh, this is what I also considered. I wasn't sure about this. The thing is, I mean, I can take, and I'm okay here, but I wasn't sure um, how good my chances are to play for an advantage. Okay, well, rook c8. It's not a terrible move b3, knight c5. Now e5 doesn't work. I mean, I, I thought at least like this doesn't work. Right, it does work somehow. I can take here, right? Yeah, that, that was, I was that, that is possible. Okay, so that doesn't pose a threat. And now I went e5. What I wanted to do anyway goes here and now knight e6 yeah and here here was the situation where i thought okay if he plays well now he's probably fine and uh, the engine gives a couple of equal positions yeah bishop g4 knight d4 yeah, and this this is actually what I was thinking. If he, I mean, taking was wrong, but if he does that, intending to trade off my knight, um, this this cannot be bad for him. Absolutely not. Rook c7, knight e2, and now this position is a little bit little bit wacky here. I think uh, I probably have to go for this. He's not threatening to take probably because of rook d7. E4 is hanging. Okay. I mean that's a bit uncomfortable. I mean I'm I'm not losing this pawn. I don't think, but this is not uh, not that nice. Yeah, I misplayed that slightly here. Absolutely. I probably should have played it differently. The engine suggested e6. Yeah, that makes some sense actually. Yeah, to start with this, and only later decide if you want to go e5 or not. And yeah, that—that's what he should have done. I mean, this is the real thing. Yeah? This is the real problem. That—that that was just losing basically. You have to see that this is a forced line. Yeah, like here, here, and now this f5 wins a piece. So, in essence, this blunders a piece. And now a bishop was trapped. So rook d4 was uh, was a decisive mistake, basically. Played that reasonably quickly. Yeah? I mean, it looks that knight looks menacing, but you you get it, you get it traded off pretty quickly. Yeah, then I think the rest um, was pretty straightforward. I don't think. I made any mistake, or it looked it looked uh, organized enough uh, that I think I didn't blunder anything. Uh, engine is on in mate uh, territory already, yeah, and it oh, yeah bishop <laughs> queen h three also was pretty strong. <laughs> okay, but um, it was a win. So the main thing here is uh, 
that somewhere around here I probably should be a bit more precise and I have better chances to to play for an advantage maybe I mean it's nothing special it's white is very solid but you have some things already some things are already um let's say um, some things happened already that are in black's favor yeah, the trade of the bishops he put many pawns on light square so they're the first steps there are the first steps um, for maybe for black to, to try to do something at least so I would like to um, be better in this position than uh, then it's something like this where white is arguably a little bit more comfortable okay guys thanks for watching